Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Cyclops Mailbox. I've got some really cool questions that you guys have asked me over the last few weeks. It's been about three weeks since I did one of these and a couple of weird questions too. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, now to start out with, I had a ton, an absolute ton of questions about the IREC Veteran 8888 Range Day. Now I've got a link to that video below and a lot of guys have watched it and evidently enjoyed it because I've got well over a thousand thumbs up on it. By the way, to all the guys that did watch it and give me a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. All right, the first question was, what is this event and how are y'all able to go shoot machine guns and do this all weekend long? It's an event that's put on by Iraq Veteran 8888. It's a channel here on YouTube, Instagram, everywhere else. It's a gigantic channel. Anyway, Eric that runs it, every year he has an annual get together and he invites YouTubers, uh, Instagram influencers and that kind of thing. He also invites a lot of the gun industry people so we can go there, see some of their new stuff, make some connections and be able to sit around and shoot machine guns for three solid days. And there's all kinds of guns there, but it's the full auto stuff, the full auto suppressed stuff, the mutant that makes everybody have a headache at the end of the day. It's a 7.62 by 39 on an AR lower, full auto in the entire time. From daylight to dark, both days, that thing never shuts down. People are loading magazines and firing it as fast as they can. Unfortunately, it never fails, so the noise level is incredible. And the way we're able to shoot all this full auto stuff is all this stuff is registered. It's all legal. There's nothing shady going on. It's just for most of us, we can't afford what it would cost to get a full auto rifle and get it registered and everything else. This is a chance for the rest of us to just go have a blast. It's seriously, it's super safe. It may not look like it in the videos, but we're actually spaced out. But it is so much fun meeting all the new people, getting to see some of the big YouTubers and stuff that have really been an inspiration for me and my channel, and getting to meet some of the smaller YouTube channels, guys that are starting in YouTube, guys that are getting going, and being able to help them in what little way I may be able to. All right, there's two other questions I get about that thing a lot. One of them is, how in the hell do I get invited to this? I don't have a clue. I really don't. I think my original invitation was probably slated for somebody else, came to me by accident. I didn't ask any questions. I just said, hell yeah, I'm in. And I've been going ever since. The other question I've got a lot about that video is who is that chick in the thumbnail? Her name is Courtney. She's actually a big deal on Instagram. She's in law enforcement and one of the coolest broads you'll ever meet. She was so freaking cool to meet. Her and her husband, they're just really good people. It was neat watching a lot of the girls shoot the machine guns. You can see a link below to Courtney's Instagram channel if you want to go on there. She's got like 30 something thousand subscribers, but it was really cool that she posed for the picture so that I would have a really cool thumbnail to put on the video. And if you know her personally, don't tell her I said this, chick can shoot too. I had a couple of other guys reach out to me and ask me when I go to events like this or these shooting things or the trade shows, who pays for it? I do. I don't have any sponsors. I don't have anybody paying my way, paying gas, hotels, anything like that. Registration fees when there's any. I pay for all of that myself. It's part of me trying to stay sponsor free and I don't want to be beholding to a bunch of these companies because if I am, then I can't be as critical as I can be on some of the stuff. Speaking of critical, uh -oh. here's another question. Another question I've got asked from a lot of guys, please do a review on the Vortex Venom. I've got that review coming. So I bought this thing with my own money. I'm going to end up giving it away after the review is over. But I knew that was the only way I was ever going to get my hands on one of these things. So keep an eye out for that review. As a matter of fact, I'm also going to pit that scope up against the Arkin SH4 6 to 24. I'm going to run them head to head. They're basically in the same price range and the best I can tell competing for the same customer. So I'm hoping that a direct head to head will let you guys see which I think is the better scope. It's probably not going to be a surprise and which one came in oh my. as a bitter, bitter disappointment for me. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about selling one of these two scopes. I'm not going to say which one, I was thinking about selling one of these two scopes, but I'm just going to give it away because I wouldn't sell a scope that performed the way one of these two did. No hints which one it is. No hint at all. 
Now, Ben said the most expensive scope he ever bought. He bought based on my reviews, and he wanted to let guys know that I'm not screwing people over, that everything I said about it was 100% accurate. Ben, I really appreciate that, man. That, that kind of feedback really helps keep me motivated. Now, here's another one I get asked a lot. Guys know I'm a big fan of Arkin, and I'm a big fan of Blackout. Now, I'm an affiliate for Arkin, but trust me when I tell you, what I get paid for each scope sold is about what a 40 ounce malt liquor costs. Ooh. It's not enough to lie about. It's not enough to skew my opinion in any way. The only reason I'm an affiliate for them is that I really like them. But guys ask me to compare the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 6 to 24 to the Blackhound Genesis 6 to 24, which is a very, very fair comparison. Here's what I would tell anybody, because I do get asked this almost daily. If you're looking for a pure precision scope, just something to take to the range, shoot long distance, and stay within a budget under $500, the Arkin, I think, is the best thing out there. On the other hand, if you're looking for something that you can go out, do some precision shooting with, and also varmint hunt, then I would go with the Black Hound. The reason that I say that, the reticle on the Black Hound is a lot easier to pick up at any magnification range. Both of them optically, it's a wash that both track perfect. Every one I've had have been exceptional freaking scopes. But the Black Hound is easier to pick up. Now, if you're younger, you've got great eyes, or you're used to looking at really thin reticles, it's not gonna be a problem. But for older guys like me, I'm coming up on 60 fast, and guys that just don't like searching for reticle or guys that are going to use a higher power scope but occasionally use it on the lower power i would go with the black count if it's just long range targets and you want the thinnest reticle possible go with the arkin i hope that explanation helps guys that are kind of torn between these two scopes all right gary left me a comment and told me somewhere down through here he got unsubscribed to my channel he was wondering why he wouldn't get notifications this happens to all the gun channels and probably other type channels too. YouTube occasionally will go through and call out some of your subscribers. How they do it, why they do it, I couldn't tell you. But they also will go through and they'll take out the notifications. So if you're subscribed to my channel and you wanna know about videos coming up, the only way to do it is to hit the notification thing and make sure it hit all. Then you don't have to watch all my videos. Who would want to watch every video? But if you want to be alerted to them, especially when I have giveaways or that kind of stuff, or maybe I review a scope that you're interested in or do another type video you're interested in, the only way you're going to know about it is to hit the notification. That's the reason you hear all these YouTubers constantly droning on and on and on about subscribe and hit the notifications to get all because YouTube occasionally does turn them off. Now I know the gun YouTubers think it's a huge conspiracy. It happens across YouTube. It's not just the gun tubers, it happens across YouTube. All right, Lewis asked me, how do you get away with saying stuff like toothless crack hoe, talk about midgets and strippers and that kind of shit on your channel? Honestly, when it comes to the bad language and the crazy stuff, YouTube doesn't really monitor that terribly hard as long as you just check the box it's not made for kids but if it's gun related you won't see it there's a lot of gun stuff you can do but here's something that sounds silly i'll be doing a review fairly quickly for this digit trigger it's a digital ar-15 trigger and it's really really freaking cool the thing is when i get ready to do the video i won't be able to show you how to install it because if i do it'll go against their community guidelines and i could get a strike on my channel and get demonetized but what i will do is show it to you up close show it to you working on the gun and then i'll have some referral links so you can go directly to digitrigger and look at what they're doing all right now thomas wanted to know do i think the smart scopes are the future of optics um I think eventually it may be. The only thing for me is when you're looking through even some of the best digital scopes, you're looking at an LCD inside of it. You're not looking at a perfect optical image. So the image quality right now is what's holding it up. And you also got to think they're putting that thing inside of a tube that's going to absorb recoil, get taken out in the elements of all freaking kinds, and it's got to hold up. That's a lot to ask from a digital scope and still get really good images. Now, for me personally, I like some of the stuff that like SIG is doing where the rangefinder links directly to the scope. And out west, if you've got plenty of time to make the shot and range it, I think it's really smart and I think it's really cool. But the really digital scopes like the ATNs, 
the CONUS EL30 and stuff like that, I still think they're a ways away from being any kind of threat to the really good optical scopes. That's just my personal opinion, but that's what I think. All right, now Slowpoke Air Gunner and a lot of other guys that have YouTube channels, especially the gun related channels, and they were asking me would I do kind of an instructional series about making YouTube videos, uh, how I edit, the cameras that I use, the microphones, some of the other stuff I've kind of learned on my journey through YouTube. So if you guys don't mind in the comments below, if you think that would be of some interest to you, leave me a comment and let me know. But to you guys that do have channels or thinking about having a channel or maybe just interested in what goes on behind making a video on YouTube, if you want, leave me a comment and let me know and it would be my pleasure to try to help some guys. All right, guys, that's about it for this video, but don't leave yet. You're gonna see a link below to Midwest Long Range. It's a buddy of mine's channel, and he's starting to do a lot of PRS type shooting, does a lot of long range optics and gun reviews that are really freaking cool. So if you don't mind, give him a look, subscribe to his channel, and check out the shit this guy's got going. I think you'll really dig it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll try to come back with another Cyclops mailbox video pretty quick, but I've got a ton of scope reviews to catch up on, including one that I'm really, really excited about, and that's the AccuFire Noctis. I'm gonna end up using a lot of their footage because I just don't have a lease that I can go out and do my own footage with, and I'm also gonna give that thing away to a visually impaired shooter that I hope you guys will register for if you're visually impaired or you know somebody else that could use a scope like this. See you guys.